Hello, everyone. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here today uh, to talk about L'Occitane uh, with my colleague Michel, uh, developer at CodeWorks. And today we will uh, talk about, uh, yes, just a story about L'Occitane, how we cultivate change uh, with natural gradients, of course, but also um, by using customer-centric APIs and implementing our uh, core tech values and principles. And of course, as you know, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not easy using APIs and, uh, uh, you know, API evangelization. Uh, so yes, of course, old habits uh, are still fighting, but um, we learn, we try, and today we want to share our key learnings. Uh, so just to introduce myself, so I'm Sandrine Bovis, uh, working at L'Occitane since 2018 now. Uh, I have a background in, uh, in digital, digital agencies, e-commerce, more digital marketing and content. And I'm now part of uh, uh, the IT department, which is not called uh, IT anymore, but I will talk about that later. And, um, and yes, I now work uh, as an API uh, uh, domain leader and product owner and API evangelist. And I give the mic to Michel. Hello everyone, thank you for coming to this session on Cultivated Change. I'm Michelle Avamo, I'm a full stack developer, uh, currently working at CodeWorks, which is uh, a consulting company here in Paris, which has uh, some specific core values with L'Occitane in Cultivating the Change and bringing uh, some fairness and commitment in the workplace. Um, today we'll be, uh, we have talk about what we've done the, for the last uh, year. We've been working together and we'll talk about the journey. So i get back the mic to yeah. Sandrine. Okay. Um, so basically, uh, just a quick, um, quick introduction to uh, L'Occitane Group. Uh, so L'Occitane is a, a beauty, uh, big beauty retailer. Not that big as L'Oreal, but uh, <laughs> um, we are very creative and entrepreneurial. Uh, we, are, we cover all over the world. We are in 19 countries uh, with, uh, I think, almost uh, 1.8 1 uh, uh, billion net sales, 3,000 uh, stores uh, around the world, and uh, 9,000 9, employees. Uh, all over the world. Um, we are a multi-brand group, which is important as well, with uh, eight, uh, eight brands, uh, which is important to say because uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we aim to, to scale uh, in, the, in the next few, uh, few months and years with uh, our APIs uh, to, uh, to, um, to give more service to our brands. And um, if you can go to the next slide. And yes, we are cultivators of change. Um, we are not here to talk about L'Occitane, but uh, um, it's important to say that uh, we, uh, we try to be uh, uh, sustainable with sustainable sourcing uh, close to uh, our farmers. Uh, we work and we focus a lot on research and innovation, and that's why we are here today. And we act locally, uh, for example, in Burkina Faso for our shea butter with uh, women empowerment. And as I said, we are cultivators of change, and change is everywhere at L'Occitane. Um, also with IT uh, technology and product, and uh, we went through a, a global transformation a few years ago, uh, before COVID-19, um, basically with uh, using uh, with uh, a lot of companies, but using agile and, and lean methods, and not only in IT, but also with marketing, communications, they have uh, uh, this kind of methodology uh, uh, working, uh, uh, working uh, with, with squads. And we went uh, from a project vision to uh, a product vision on our side. Um, so we aim to build a flexible system architecture. And we really aim also to put our customers and our beauty advisors uh, really at core. Uh, that's why, um, basically, um, we needed some change uh, by uh, going through this transformation uh, because we had some of course, has many companies, uh, sometimes team bottlenecks uh, with uh, our integration, uh, data integration, customer data platform, data lake, etc. It was so difficult to, to move forward sometimes uh, on the business side. And I come from the business side, so I know what I, <laughs> I, know what I say. Um, 
we had some developments uh, in silos, uh, like yeah, you all know the Conley, uh, the Conley law, and so we had some delays and difficulties to, to drive innovation and to move forward sometimes. So generating a lot of uh, unsatisfaction and, and frustration. So we needed a, a deep change. Um, and that's why we decided to build a, a customer-centric uh, APIs, because we really believe that this customer-centric API, so bringing a um, functional vision uh, in this catalog, um, helps to interact in real time with uh, all uh, 360 information um, from our customer to reduce this time to market drive business innovation and, and how, we're going to explain that uh, later with Michel, but by safely exposing uh, this uh, uh, curated data and services, uh, of course with techni technical excellence and agility, and uh, we wanted to give uh, more autonomy to our partners and hiding this complexity that we, uh, that we had. So, um, if you can go, yes. <laughs> so we built, as I said, this uh, customer-centric API team. Uh, last summer, uh, we recruited three developers. We are now uh, four developers. Uh, we had also one business analyst. We have one tech advisor and uh, one product owner. We really focused on the recruitment because we wanted very talented people uh, to move forward with them and, and bringing best practices that we will see uh, together. Um, the mindset was very important uh, in this recruitment versus art skills. Of course, we, of course we hire <laughs> talented people, but the mindset was very important for us because we wanted diversity in, in the group. Uh, we wanted complementary profiles um, with different background and skills, which we, uh, which we have. Um, and uh, I think it's a success for, for this team, uh, which works very well together. Uh, we all work remotely, kind of full remotely, between uh, Paris and Geneva, but we, uh, uh, we have some uh, uh, meetings, of course, physically uh, every month, uh, every two weeks, depending on how our sprints. And we share some core values, very important for us, about around trust, feedbacks, and really learning together. Learning is very, uh, very important for us. And building this, uh, this team, um, we focus on three main uh, objectives. Develop our API catalog, having more, more and more APIs. Uh, building something perform with performance and, uh, and uh, qualitative, of course, and then generate adoption, which is key for all of us. And just briefly about uh, one of our business use cases, which is uh, kind of our sandbox. Uh, we have, for example, a clienteling application for our beauty advisors in stores uh, to contact their best customers. And this application, which is a front application on a, on a, on a, on a, on a device, um, beauty, beauty um, advisors, they don't know who to contact first. Uh, the application was not very flexible. Uh, the, the, the initial build was uh, a custom build and it was not scalable and not reusable. So our decision was really to facilitate access to this data, uh, to the right data and having a, uh, an evolving API catalog. Uh, we wanted to avoid this manual task and uh, remove this flat files that we, we didn't like. And we wanted um, uh, to, to make them able to, to reuse these APIs and also for other domains, not only for this app, but also for CRM, for example, and across markets, of course. So for example, just one endpoint that we have here, um, for this clienteling application, uh, we can have a, an endpoint getting customers, a customer's list uh, by their um, purchase orders or by, by, they, by their spendings. Uh, so uh, the beauty advisor uh, knows who to contact first, of course, with opted in, uh, opted in information. And how we did that, Michel uh, is gonna explain how we implemented these APIs uh, and what are these best practices? Thank you, Sandra. Um, because we, don't, we didn't know how many of you will be more like developers and how many will be more like product owners, we won't go in deep details in the technical implementations, but if you have any questions, please find us and feel free to ask. Um, 
as Sandrine said, we started the project a year ago in the middle of the summer, you remember. And uh, we are three of us, and the three of us are all in different companies. We have, we have like uh, 10 years ex experience each, and we came at L'Occitane with um, a common mindset on what we talked as developer to be the best practices. And what we started, and we know that L'Occitane have put a lot of confidence on us, and one of the first things they said is that we choose how we want to work, we choose our stack, and we only have to bring the value. And Sandrine and Peter uh, will be monitoring what we are doing. And what we, we said is that since we are three of us in different places, uh, we will be working in remote. So we are one, the one team at L'Occitane working in full remote. We are doing that through our team's channel and we are using the render emitted, what, which means that uh, it, every 25 minutes, one of us actually takes the, the, the keyboard while the others are, uh, are navigating, giving the solutions. Um, we have like uh, after like maybe six months working full remote and in mob programming, we addressed the issue that we needed a space where we could actually challenge the past decisions that we made. That's why we actually had the space, what we call the tech improvement space. So every two weeks, we are able to actually challenge what we did before and experiment before putting in production or in the main branch, as we will see it, uh, later, what we, what we want to bring as a new uh, technique in the code base. The only recommendation that we had from our tech advisor is to try the API design first, which means that we will be actually designing the, the contract that we are uh, receiving, that we will be sharing with our main customers, which we, we can be other developers or we can be like another biz, uh, L'Occitane business unit. And since that, we actually implement the API design first using a tool called Stoplight that I didn't see here today, uh, but we saw a lot of competitors. If there is somebody from Stoplight here, you are doing a great job, thank you. And uh, there is another thing that we said, because we are going in API design first and we are in 2021 back then, uh, we chose to do some, we still to go with the standards. And one of the standards was the open API specification a.k.a. Uh, Swagger, where we will be able to generate, to use the standard plugins to generate our contracts and actually implementing the features using the outside-in TDD approach. TDD meaning the test-driven development. Outside-in because we go from the examples and we are able from the examples to provide a very quick uh, first implementation where we have the main contract, the expected contracts, uh, which will be consumed by the customers. So the, the, what is very important here is that once we have the contract, we are able to actually implement it very fast to have the feedback from our stakeholders and to make sure that we are heading to the right directions. And we chose at that moment to use the hexagonal architecture because the hexagonal architecture gave us the flexibility to change our mind on technologies. We want to, for, we are using Spring Boot but we, didn't, we couldn't choose if it will be full, full Spring Boot from the beginning to the end or we will go, to, we will go with a GraphQL. Because we, were not, we, can, we couldn't guess how the team will be one year later, so we decided that putting all the dependencies on frameworks out of the, our core domain will be the best approach. And those are like the standard way we are working. So we are working uh, continuously in mob uh, with different uh, challenge. And, but the thing is, um, having the full autonomy on the stack on which we work and on the way we want to work, we actually had that great responsibility to make sure that none of what we are exposing, so the customer data, for example, the personal data of uh, our customers or the uh, sensible informa sensitive information from L'Occitane, whatever we are exposing for um, our API should not leak. That's why we took advantage of the API management portal that L'Occitane already had, and we customized the O2 authentication in order to have for one part of the authentication, so we have all our customers have some credit credentials, but then uh, not all of them have the ability, they, ha they don't have the scopes, to access all our APIs because some users could need only to access the other history and the others could have access to the customer information. 
So we are using web method to do that, and we have the scope and spell, this is defined. We actually, and this is the part where I said we don't go deep dive because we already have some uh, other mechanism, the verification mechanism on our own server, but this is not the place, I think, and we don't have the time to go deep dive inside. But what you should know is that once our customers are authenticated and are using our APIs, we, are, we plugged the monitoring system right after that because we need to know what happened. When something goes wrong in production or in our dev environment, we need to know what happened before. And to do that, because Doxitan is a big group, has, uh, as you saw before, we have different uh, tools. And uh, each tool has a specific mechanism. We actually use both of them, or maybe three of them. And the most important thing is that we are using uh, Kibana for everything which is observability and uh, KPIs. And we are using Postman to check if each of our clients still has the right access in the right environment. That's interesting, right? So we are providing uh, continuous benefits. For we are implementing the business cases in a mob in uh, using the best practices in security, just like we learn in the standard industry today. And then we decided that, of course, that we're in 2021, so we needed to uh, be in, uh, to bring value, to deliver quickly. We don't want L'Occitane to wait for a year before having their first use case. So we went for the continuous integration using Git. Um, the good news is that since we are, mo we are mobbing, we are working ensemble all the time, we don't have any Git conflict. We don't need uh, a peer review, properly speaking, because normally we are challenging all the ideas every uh, 25 minutes, or during the whole day, actually. Uh, but what we kept in the Git flow, it's uh, the feature branching approach which is the peer request where we have the build running and once the build running we have the deployment where we can actually have the different uh, the feature in the right environment and then we move to the demo where in the demo we had um, next uh, and the demo because we have different environments and different stakeholders so we have one part for the business where we actually present most of the features like a, in a retool, in a low-code environment, and we have uh, the Swagger Postman part on uh, Swagger and Postman, the uh, JSON. Because we don't have much of time, so I'm going to ask to ask Sandrine how she monitors it, and if they are happy with what we are delivering. Yeah, we are very happy. <laughs> and uh, yes, because we, we still keep in mind that we uh, have to drive business innovation and reduce our, our time to market thanks to uh, all of your work and the, the work of the team. Um, but we still keep in mind that we have to follow and to monitor uh, uh, some KPIs. So it's just a, an example. Uh, I, I won't go uh, in detail, but uh, one of uh, our objectives is to develop the catalog. So of course we monitor that. How many endpoints do we have? How many use cases? Uh, how many clients? Uh, but also technical excellence, as we said. So. Uh, uh, monitoring success rate, availability, uh, and, uh, and just um, the, the response. Um, and the adoption. Adoption is very important because we, know, we all know that if uh, APIs are not reused, then uh, it's just uh, a time wasted. So uh, we, we uh, still have a, a lot of work to generate adoption and to explain and explain what are the global benefits for, for the group. So we monitor that uh, very closely. Um, and of course, we keep an eye on, on the team, how the team collaborates together, uh, the deliverability, uh, their engagement, and very, very important, and the more important, the voice of customer. So how the customer use our APIs, uh, are they satisfied with that? So we uh, run twice a year a survey uh, with, uh, to get feedbacks. Uh, and, and also every month and every uh, every demo, we ask for feedback to, to learn and to uh, to see how we who, how we can improve uh, together, and of course the business impact uh, for each of uh, our use case. That being said, um, a lot of learnings. Um, uh, we like uh, we love post-its as you can as you can see. So we learn every day. Um, autonomy and technical excellence. It, works well. Uh, we are very happy with that and our customers are very happy with that and they said that we have a, 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 a good user satisfaction. 
uh, we still have to explain long-term benefits. Uh, it's a, it's a full-time job to explain that to business department, but also on, on tech department uh, with our, our colleagues. Uh, the Conway law is true. <laughs> Uh, and it's very something I wanted to insist on is product client and developer client. We work for developers, but we also work for business. Uh, we need them to understand uh, why we do that. And it's not, uh, as someone said before, but it's not just technical, but it's uh, uh, explaining the outcomes and, and, and benefits. And API? <laughs> API is not a silver bullet, as we always cite. We can put the best practical technical expertise that we can, but then we are working in a middle of systems and it doesn't actually, uh, it doesn't solve all the company's pr problem. And to end before, <laughs> before we get, uh, um, do we take uh, questions. Um, we wanted to say that we, keep, we came here at, uh, also in this uh, feedback loop thing, so we will be very happy to have some feedbacks if there is something that we are doing that you're interested in or something that we don't do that you do, actually. We are very open-minded and we will take it uh, uh, very nicely. And maybe you wanted to end. No, thank you. Yes, we will continue to uh, develop uh, our catalog and uh, measure, get feedbacks. And so we are open for that, as Michel said. And uh, yes, we will continue like this. So thank you for being here. And don't hesitate if you have uh, any question. Yeah.